Hi everybody, it's Christina from Pretty Distressed. Welcome back to my channel. In today's video, I am going to be using a paint additive to create a piece with a lot of texture. This is gonna be perfect for a piece that's in really rough shape, has a lot of damage. In fact, my piece is not even real wood. So if you wanna see how I created this textured look, just keep watching. The piece I am tackling today is actually the first piece of furniture I ever chalk painted. This thing is not real wood, and I didn't really know how to properly prep a piece. Back then, I didn't really know that I should have sanded this raised paint down, and it's always kind of shown through my paint, and I don't hate it, but I'm just kind of sick of this piece, and I wanted to do something different. I wanted to add some texture and do something really creative just to give my living room a little bit of a makeover. I'm gonna be using the Sea Spray Additive and add it to my paint and creates this really beautiful texture. I'm gonna be trying out some dry brushing today. So this is gonna be really artistic and different for me, but I had a lot of fun doing it and wanted to share it with you guys. Today's video is being sponsored by my friends at Hunter. I am going to be installing this Apache Wi-Fi enabled fan from their Simple Connect collection, which is gonna be compatible with Amazon Alexa, Google Assistant, and Apple HomeKit, which means I'm gonna be able to control it with the sound of my voice, unlike this guy that is currently installed. And look what a difference this fan makes. This inspired design really reflects my personal style with those distressed white wash blades. Hey Siri. Turn on the fan. Okay, the Hunter fan is on. Now that is gonna come in handy when I am cooking dinner and I've got a hot stove running and flour all over my hands. Okay, so let's start this project. I'm going to be cleaning my piece with my Dixie Belle White Lightning. You guys have seen me use this before on my channel. I absolutely love this stuff. It cleans pieces of furniture and gets them ready. I know you probably get bored of seeing me clean my furniture, but this is the best way to make sure your paint is gonna adhere properly. You can say I lost my mind. I will keep on holding my head high. Even if the sky is falling down Like I mentioned in the intro, this piece is in rough shape. It's got lots of cracks and dents. That's why this sea spray finish is gonna be perfect for this. It's also gonna cover up that stenciling that I mentioned. So if you have a piece with chipping veneer or that's in rough shape, this might be a good technique for you to try out. It's super easy. This is the Dixie Belle Sea Spray Additive and I'm just gonna add it to my Dixie Belle paint. I'm gonna be using the color Driftwood today, which is a really pretty light gray and I'm using this Home Depot quart to measure out my paint. It makes it super easy with all the markings that it has on it. So just typical shaking up my paint like I normally do, adding four ounces of paint, and then I'm gonna add one scoop of sea spray. And the scoop comes in here, so that's really handy. Um, I added all mine in, and mine ended up being a little thicker than I probably wanted it. So I recommend just adding a little bit at a time and mixing it as you go. You wanna have a brownie batter consistency, so something that's it's gonna look like this. If it gets too thick, you can always add more paint. And if it's too thin, you can just keep adding a little bit of sea spray until it gets to the consistency that you want. I'm gonna be using the Dixie Belle chip brush to apply this and I'm just getting it damp and then getting some of that paint on there. And you are just gonna smush and smash this in every direction to create that really beautiful texture. I don't recommend using a really expensive brush to do this because you might ruin it. This brush actually turned out okay after I cleaned it out. Um, but it's a $6 brush, so I wasn't super concerned about ruining it forever. As you can see, there's really not a lot of technique to this. I am just clumping my paint on there and it's making this beautiful texture. Jumping from cliffs so high Trusting our wings to fly Sometimes we're crashing down we get up and start from the ground And I, I really wanna know My face while I'm doing this technique is pretty hilarious, so enjoy. I did this on a pretty hot day and my paint was drying up really quickly, so I just added more paint um, if it got too thick to work with. And I kept spraying my brush every now and then with my spray bottle so it wouldn't get too clogged up. Can say I lost my mind, I will keep on holding my head high. 
high Even if the sky is falling down After you get your paint on, if you feel like you have too much texture or your peaks are too high and you want to smooth them out, you can take a brush and kind of calm them down a little bit. I really liked mine, so I left them the way they were. Using this sea spray is going to make your dry time just a little bit longer because the paint is so thick. Typically Dixie Belle paint dries within an hour, but I let this set for two to three hours before I went on to my next step. So once this was dry, I decided I was gonna do a white dry brush on top and I grabbed my Jolie Gesso White, which I have been saying wrong for the past three videos that I used this in. Thank you viewers for letting me know that I was saying it wrong. I'm gonna be dry brushing today, so I got a very minimal amount of paint on my Dixie Belle Mini and I'm actually wiping off the remainder of it on this paper towel. Then I'm just going in in every direction with the lightest, lightest pressure ever. I'm really just feathering over the piece. And what this is doing is just getting color on those peaks that I created using the sea spray. And it's giving it a really cool effect that almost makes this look like stone or concrete. Oh, even in the hot you and I can weather any storm. I really love this gesso white because it's very neutral. It doesn't pull cream. Um, it's white, but it has a lot of interest to it. In fact, gesso is Italian for chalk. So just think of it as like a ch white chalk on a chalkboard. I know there are a lot of whites out there, but this one's kind of my favorite because it goes with warm tones and it goes with cool tones. This technique is definitely way more artistic than the things you normally see me do on here, but it was really fun and therapeutic to do something different. After about an hour, I was ready to top coat my piece. I'm gonna be using Dixie Belle Clear Coat in flat with my Dixie Belle Mini, the same brush I just used to paint. I really like using these with this top coat lately and I found they work a lot better when your brush is a little bit damp. So you barely get any clear coat on here and wipe the excess off. And normally with this, I say go in one direction, but since this piece is so textured, you can actually go in every which direction and you're not gonna see streaks. You just wanna watch out for globs because they can pull around all those peaks and crests that we created. This stuff dries really fast and is ready to recoat in a couple of hours. So I always just keep my cup and put saran wrap over it and then put my brush in saran wrap so I don't have to clean up everything in between coats. Again, and spraying that brush down to keep it nice and damp and just apply that second coat. I think you're really gonna be better off using a clear coat on top of this finish versus using a wax because a wax you're gonna have to rub and buff and I would be afraid of that paint lifting off or messing up your crests. So I think it's just better to seal it with a top coat and it's gonna be nice and stuck on there. That's crazy, but things are finally right. The future is so for the top, I decided to use gator hide since this is a end table that goes in my living room. It gets used a lot. It's gonna have a lamp on it. I usually put my coffee cups and stuff on here. I still use coasters <laughs> to protect my furniture, but I thought it would be a lot better off since the kids are gonna be messing with this thing too. And it just gets used every single day to top coat it with that gator hide. It is the most durable and protective top coat in the Dixie Bell line. And it's just gonna offer a little bit more protection than that clear coat. 
Here I'm applying the second coat after it dried for two hours in the opposite direction just to make sure I'm getting every little area. Again, typically when I am putting this on, I go in the same direction, but because this is so textured, it doesn't matter. And that's it. There weren't a lot of steps with this project and I got it done really quickly. This is what we started off with, that really creamy paint and a lot of that stencil coming through. And here is what it looks like now. I love this color, it's neutral but the texture really helps it stand out and look different from anything else that I have in my house. It almost looks like stone or concrete. It's very artistic for me, so I think I'm gonna enjoy looking at this piece. And I like that I can't see any of that green and yellow paint coming through anymore. And don't forget what a huge difference this Hunter fan is making in this space. Two quick updates that are making a big impact. Thank you guys for joining me for today's video. I hope you enjoyed learning about sea spray and try this technique out on your own. I'll be back with another project next week. Thanks for being here, you guys, and I will see you next time. You need to go somewhere else. What is that going my tight? No, right there? Yeah? Roofie. Uh-uh, no paintbrush. Both went out. Blow the fuse.